Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I didn't prepare slides, I just prepared pictures. Uh, am I well heard? Yeah, hopefully. Okay, so I'm going to talk about LARPs or live action role playing games, uh, which some of you may have heard about before, some of you may have been to some, but actually the German scene is not very, very strong in this. Uh, it's somehow thing that mainly oscillates in between Middle Eastern countries and Nordic countries for some reason we never really understood. And I basically want to swiftly go through how a LARP could look and then also get to some things we did in a recent time which combine uh, digital games with live action games, which I'm actually hoping would be the most interesting part. Uh, I started with LARPing when I was 14, which means a decade ago, which is the time where this picture was taken. Uh, I chose it because I think that's an image that some of the people who heard about LARPs uh, have sort of in mind. Basically a bunch of kids with sticks. Uh, this is from an event that's called Battle of Five Armies, so Tolkien expired. Uh, if you didn't recognize, these guys are orcs. <laughs> That's what they let call is for, for. So this is uh, 2003, a decade later, and one of the people at least is still in the second picture. <laughs> That's how it looks currently. Uh, I will go through a few pictures from current games just to give you an idea how serious we are at least about the costumes because this is a games event I was thinking well let's pick some that are based on famous games and let you guess so anytime you know a game scream the name we'll start with something very simple so to try it out thank you it was not as loud as I would expect <laughs> let's try better next time this one is a little tougher. I actually included two pictures from this one. Any idea? Yes. Oh, sorry, well, Warhammer. Uh, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> I will use the second one. Uh, uh, that's from the same game. Uh, can I zoom the fuck in? I apparently can't zoom. Uh, okay, do you, need, do you see this nice orc on this guy's back? So that was supposed to be a Warcraft orc. Uh, that's one of the heroes from Warcraft. There's another one. Uh, okay, this one is easier again. Yes. Uh, harder again. This is the necromant from Gothic. Necromant suit. Uh, this one would be really hard, so I took something simple from the game. Uh, this one actually, uh, yeah, so the guy on, the, on your left, yes. Uh, that's kind of me with long hair. Uh, this one actually somehow got through the internet to the Heroes of Might and Magic guys, and they did a cosplay contest based on this picture. So this is actually a screenshot from their page. Uh, the second next to me is my one of my best friends, our queen at the time. Uh, yeah, this is not actually one particular game, but I just like this <laughs> guy. Uh, okay, so uh, some of the pictures. Uh, I wanted to uh, also suggest that uh, basically what you've seen were games that, or pictures from games that were somehow kind of a battle-like, so a bunch of guys get into costumes, they pretend they are in the fictional universe and they kick each other's butts uh, with weapons that actually fit in the scenario. But there are a lot of options how such a role-playing game can go. And I made a very simple chart, basically pointing out what can be a span of the properties of live-action role-playing game. Uh, when it comes to time, it can be something that can happen in very short period of time. Some of these things actually more remind some 
team building experiences. Uh, like maybe some of you have played a game where you are a bunch of guys in a uh, hot air balloon that's constantly descending and you need to decide whom to throw out so you get your hide back. Uh, I'm not sure how it's team building though, but yeah, okay. Uh, on the on the other side, you have games that take several months. They are basically usually somehow uh, involved or overlapping with your normal life. I think some of them are also quite well known, like the games where you have to assassinate somebody, and you know who the guy is. You have like his picture, and you know where he studies or whatever. And there's somebody who needs to assassinate you. Uh, we have one popular uh, in the city where I studied where you do the assassination by putting some, uh, a toothbrush on somebody's neck. Uh, it basically spans until there's one winner, and usually there are more than 1,000 people in the beginning. And some people get quite paranoid about that, and I know people that didn't go to lectures because of that and like somehow failed the semester afterwards. Uh, so when you have built one, you get Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. You, no, you actually have to get your own toothbrush. <laughs> uh, then you, like, as I said, most of the games I've shown were in the action side. Uh, there are also some that basically like throw you in a world and you should somehow explore or feel how the world is and not really like fight with anybody or be somewhat physical. <laughs> And last thing, last scale, I figured, is somehow a balance between gameplay and roleplay. So some of the games are really trying to like sell fictional resources to somebody for some other fictional resources so your group could win the game in the end. And some of them are more really into the kind of interactive uh, theater. I'm actually I'm constantly putting this up and down. Am I heard well even without the microphone? OK. Uh, I will try to keep it here. Uh, so some examples of games that are not in different parts of this diagram. And I will actually start with a video from a game that was called Project System. Uh, it's a trailer for the game and somehow gives you the overall mood of the game. What happened in the video was that the guy tore down the poster for the party and some representative of the party was in his flat already by the time he came back. Uh, so this was a game that was sent in a totalitarian setting. Basically, we had a village on our own. Uh, everybody had a role in, in that village, basically living his usual life in a world that's somewhat different from ours. That's totalitarian. Uh, dystopian. <laughs> uh, this is one of the pictures from the game. Uh, actually, it was frankly quite immersive, so I was there as a student and I didn't want to... There was a problem, there, a problem occurred and I didn't want to tell on my classmates. So in the end, I got prohibited from going to the main city of the world or of the country where it was taking place and from going to university. And I really had to like reassure myself that actually that doesn't mean that I, as a person, cannot study. It's like just the character. And it's when you get into it and when like everything around is set up to feel real, it really starts persuading your brain it is. Uh, another game, more <laughs> lightheaded. <laughs> Uh, this one uh, was in a classical setting and basically it was more of a reenactment of life in, I think it was 14th century. Uh, this one was very interesting in the sense that it was called Dance Macabre and the only way how you could uh, play in the game was by dancing. So there was a dancing workshop between, and then you could just express yourself via dancing and movement. Uh, another atmospheric uh, costume-based, really 
we set you in the world of Dostoevsky and just enjoy the dark mood of it. Uh, yeah, this one I just included because I like it. Uh, uh, here I'm actually going to uh, to get to the, my main point uh, with this beautiful car that was updated for a game that was set in the setting similar to Fallout. It was not built from the scratch. This one was built from the scratch. Uh, and it gets me to my main point, and that's a game called Strepini, uh, which we set up a year ago. I will also show trailer without sound, just a minute of it. At least what you were supposed to see were a few high-tech things we used for the game. And basically this game was a combination of that living experience. We will set you in a highly sci-fi world with uh, basically what we created for the purpose of the game. And I just wanted to share with you like, how some contemporary technologies can be used to create such, such a scenario. So, for example, we had a reactor that from time to time was kind of failing. And everybody had to go to a bunker if it was happening. And we created it by having a pillar that used 3D projection mapping that was just like showing the, project, uh, the reactor on the pillar. So this is just like a gray thing without the projection. Uh, we used uh, key mapping to create uh, off-world communication, where basically we talked in real time, and then you had the background and folks moving in behind and stuff. Uh, we had a database, which basically the players uh, got uh, like keywords for, and if they had the right keyword, they could look it up in the database, uh, which were also going down quite often. That was not actually intended. Uh, this is a remote control for a robot you saw there. So we also communicated with the players via the robot, who had his own camera, microphone, and speaker. Uh, this is a control panel for the organizers. Uh, where basically there was a meta game where players were controlling the satellites uh, around the planet and they were sending the satellites and for us not to have to remember what happens when a satellite is sent and also to include some randomness we actually had the game that we were then running and we were getting the feedback from the software instead of just telling the players uh, completely last thing we had a medical scanner which is probably suitable for any uh, sci-fi scenario. Uh, we created custom QR code reader, and everybody, every player had a QR code on himself or on themselves. And uh, when they were scanned with this, the, uh, the app connected to the database, it read the current status of the player and it displayed it for the holder of the scanner. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for your attention. Questions? What was that game? <laughs> uh, the last one. No, the second one. No, no, the, the question is sorry, Dave. I'm sorry that I just jumped in. I just, never mind. I skipped it. Okay. How long lasted the last game? Yeah, uh, sorry? How long lasted this one game? Uh, a day. Well, it dip oh sorry, it really depends on the setting of the game. So, if you have uh, ex like environmental experience, there's nothing to really cheat. Like, you can cheat that you are not sad at the time or <laughs> something, but <laughs> that's that's not really cheating. Uh, when it comes to battles, it's quite problematic, and basically half of the battles are like airsoft battles. So you usually do the same thing as you would have in like airsoft or paintball. And if somebody, I mean, it usually is quite obvious. Like if there's a kid. Uh, 
It depends on the scale of the game. So the Battle of Five Armies, which usually has uh, 1,500 players at a time, it somehow needs um, monitoring, of course. Uh, but that's usually not... Uh, it actually uses somewhat a Wikipedia scheme. So there are like players who came for the sixth or seventh time, and they are given the... Uh, well, they, they are given the powers to, like, punish or to regulate the game, even though they are not really involved. Uh, in, for example, this particular game, all of these folks were actually organizers. So basically everybody who had, like, power to really push the game through was pre-scripted. Uh, the thing with assassinations... It doesn't really require anything. You just need to <laughs> count. I don't think it even happens that like somebody would get killed and then claim not to be. But of course, mainly at the uh, like battles with the wood sticks, there are like guys, a lot of guys claiming, "Well, I didn't get hit," and usually you just hit them harder than. <laughs> Last question, I guess. Uh, it in both of them, I actually showed trailers for the outcomes are variable, and they are adjusted by the game masters based on the what happen, what the players do. So, as I gave the example with me actually not going to the school because I didn't grass on my. Uh, schoolmates, somebody grasped on me, and then he actually had much better outcome from the game as a character than I had. So this is not pre-scripted. Uh, some events usually need to happen. So it really depends on the like form of the game and on the scheme. If you have a battle, then who wins the battle <laughs> when the game? So. It varies. So, like an individual action, is it determined like through like the dice, or how do you know if, if you succeeded in doing something? Well, if I succeeded at hitting somebody, I know by physically hitting him. And like, if uh, in the role playing games, there, I mean, if I don't tell on somebody that I, then I physically didn't do it. And the game master knows that I didn't do it, so he adjusts. Things. So it's very interactive in the sense that basically the game can be somehow scheduled in major events, but you usually, uh, the people who are controlling the game need to be very experienced in how to adjust it based on the actions of players. And the actions, uh, in a lot of games, the actions of players against other players actually create the game. So Actually, most of the experience games are based like that, that you just like create this lot of opportunities for conflict to arise, and then the players somehow escalate the conflict, and the conflict somehow results, but you as a game master don't have a control about it. I think we're... No. <laughs> Later.